Okay, so this is the ZWO EAF, the autofocuser, and we're going to find, try and fit this to the Skywatcher uh, P200P. And there is a few problems with this. Um, you can remove the focuser, um, or the focus handle, I should say, undoing the grub screw, and then the handle just pulls off, like I've done there. Um, and then the connectors, the coupling that comes with the ZWO fits fine, but it is very tight to the edge. Um, if you want to move that quite close to the edge, then there isn't much thread to grab hold of, but there is just enough, so that isn't really a problem. The biggest problem, however, is when you remove the uh, locking screw, normally on some other models um, of this Crayford Focuser, there's actually two screws then available to screw in the bracket. On this model, there's only one, but more than that, this side here, this side, is actually curved. So what happens is when you offer this up, to the side and it's difficult to do it one-handed but this actually is moving if you can see there it's rocking back and forth so it is going to fit um, but what we're going to do instead is we're actually going to swap all these I've taken one out already we're going to swap all these for M3 um, machine screws and we're also going to pad them up with a few washers so then when you screw it down it will be still locking this bottom bracket onto the scope or onto the focuser but we're also going to hopefully level out the actual uh, bracket as well so we're going to try and do that now and see how it goes okay so there's the bracket off now and you can see what i mean by the curve and it's also not helped by the fact that the bracket itself has to go on this way around it's going to have to go on this way around to give the focuser enough clearance at this side so it will actually go in the motor and the, the problem with that is that that side's nice and flat and this side has got a strange ridge which i presume is for some different scopes it must fit on perfectly like that so this weird slotted side is going to have to fit on to the bracket and as i say now we're just going to use some m3 um, machine screws like this um, and some washers to align this so that it pads it out enough so that it fits on flush. Okay, so I've got these nicely sandwiched now. And I'm going to do this off camera, but now it's just a case of dropping this on and tightening it up. It's quite nice because that screw, that M5 bolt there, does hold this little sandwich together while we put it on. Okay, so that's screwed up or bolted up now. And you can see that's just being lifted ever so slightly just to take into account that little curve on that bracket and all the washers are pushing down on that bracket so it's fully tightened now i've just adjusted the tensioner as well just to make it so that it doesn't fall under its own pressure i might just loosen that ever so slightly but that looks looking good so far so that's the final setup the ef is installed um, and it seems to be running well the mount is pushed as far this way as it can go and there is just enough room um, or there is just enough of the spindle inside the uh, coupler just to get hold of that flat spot, so just on the side of the grub screw. Uh, everything's nice and solid and it looks to uh, looks to be working nicely so i have plugged this in now and i've actually plugged it in i didn't show this off camera but i actually had to plug it in and make it work to just turn the spindle so that the flat spot was at the top so that i could actually attach the grub screw um, but we're going to go through the setup now and hopefully get this working and the backlash, cal backlash calibrated so i'm in nina now and i've installed the zwo eaf ascom drivers and connected the focuser. I got two instances, focuser one and focuser two, but I left focuser one that seemed to connect absolutely fine. I went to settings and then the autofocus settings and I left most of the default settings there. The only thing I changed was this uh, initial off step steps to from four to three, but that was uh, when I'd actually got it somewhere close, so therefore I'd leave that at four. The important one though is the uh, autofocus step size. I changed that to 100 uh, and worked out that I got a bit backlash of around 50 steps, which I've also input in there. So now on the imaging tab, there is autofocus at the top right hand side. 
Uh, unfortunately, at this point, I've actually moved the autofocus graph over the image just to give a clearer view on camera, but you can't actually see now the uh, the images being taken and going more, sh more and more sharp, but the, the things happening behind the graph. And at this point, I'm going to speed the graph up uh, or the, the autofocus generation up uh, while it plots the autofocus points. So the graph is basically plotting the HFR of the stars against the focuser position and it will keep moving the focuser, calculating the HFR and hopefully improving the HFR to a point where it will eventually, as we're getting now on this graph, to a point where actually the HFR starts to get worse. From this point then, it will draw a curve and it will take the focuser to the position that it thinks will be optimum. And it is worth noting that you do have to play around with the exposure time as well to ensure that that is getting a good HFR for the stars. So now at the end of this process, you get the nice graph, you get the optimum HFR, and you also get the focuser position, which it will take it to. So autofocus is fitted, it's working well. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.